Wine Block Header Bill. Uh, this is part two. Um, back in the shop, of course, and it's a little cold out here. We've had ice and snow and all the rest of that uh, this time of year in early February. But uh, when we last left off, what we're trying to do is um, take a look at the header flanges and make sure that they line up. And I encourage you to do this. You buy stuff off the shelf, make sure it fits before you start some of the fabrication and everything. Um, but what we need to do next is we need to go ahead and uh, oblong that last hole just to make sure that we can get the bolt uh, through the hole to the head uh, before we even think about welding up the flanges uh, to okay. the small block Chevrolet uh, shorty header tubes. Okay, uh, got the die grinder out and a couple of rafts here. Um, I've got some different sizes. These are brand new. I, I bought these to do some port work on a set of G heads. I don't know how much more I'm gonna to have to do the set I bought. Um, most of it's been cleaned up already. But um, what I've done is just kind of laid this out. I'm gonna assume that the way this was cut at Speedway or whatever manufacturer is for them, you can tell where the lines are at and uh, where everything's cut. Um, you know, uh, these aren't CNC, of course. But, um, it's just a little bit off. So I went ahead and just took a marker uh, to give me an idea about how far I need to go. And then I'll test fit these and just make sure uh, each time. I've got one chucked up here in, in a vise that we're gonna attack. So um, I won't record much of this. This is probably pretty simple for a lot of us. All right, so we've got uh, the flange mounted and all the um, bolts started and loose except for the last one. And uh, you can see in there, you can tell we're, we're going to be good. So, but um, no sense in taking off more metal than you need. Um, test fit stuff, bring it back. Uh, what's the old deal? <laughs> Measure twice, cut once. Okay, uh, those rasps made quick work of uh, making that hole a little bit wider and the fit's perfect. So now that we got that done, uh, next thing to do is to put the car up on jack stands. And we'll give it a good shake just for safety's sake and make sure we're good. I'd encourage you to do that. Put stuff on stands or putting that car up in the air it could be dangerous. Be careful. Oh, we got the car up in the air. Um, just to talk to you about this and the clearance issues. Uh, usually, usually on the passenger side, you're not going to have much issue with clearancing headers. Uh, if you look down in there, you can see there's a lot of room um, above, behind, to the left and right, all of that. Uh, the only thing I can think of that may be an issue that I've got to watch for is clearancing where the um, oh, part of the frame comes in. I don't know if you can see it. We'll go underneath the car. We'll take a look at that, and I'll show it to you. While we're here up top, we'll take a look at the driver's side, which is the one that gets extremely interesting on clearancing. Um, towards the front, not a big deal. And to be honest with you, I don't know where I'm going to be on my booster. That could be an issue here. We'll find out. Of course, the original exhaust manifold sweep up so high, um, and I've still got clearance here. But at any rate, um, if you look back there in the back, get beyond this brake line. If you Back in the back where the exhaust manifold exits, you can see it is so close to the steering column already. And of course, we're already close to the steering gear as well over here. And then um, the two companies that do make uh, a header off the shelf for the Y block, um, they say, of course, you know, you're gonna have to modify your levers, your shift levers. That that uh, top of the column there, uh, that where I added that dummy shaft, that's normally where your shift levers would go, almost right there to the middle of the screen. So um, that's going to be the interesting thing to clearance um, for this side. All right, so when you think about um, clearance and all of this kind of thing and what I showed you in the basement in part one uh, with the mock-up of the two heads and then trying to match exactly uh, how that uh, original exhaust manifold swings down 
And then um, just knowing how tight things are in here, what I wanna be able to do is pull out most of the exhaust system, obviously the manifolds, the downpipes, and then see what I've got, um, how far I'm gonna have to tuck in, uh, play around with it a little bit, and before I even do any tack welding, and especially before I do any cutting on the header tubes and all of that. I uh, may be able to bend them into some configuration where they're gonna fit the flange uh, first, but at any rate, I wanna see if this is doable. I know I've already cut things, but um, I don't have much in this. And like I say, I was gonna use these um, headers on my run stand no matter what. So that's really not gonna be much of an issue. Um, as far as what I'm going to do with this, they're not, they're not going to turn into scrap. That's not a problem. But um, hopefully, I want to be able to use these on the car. Okay, um, just had a thought when I was looking at the upside um, here of the car and the engine compartment. I thought, you know, are these headers even symmetrical? And that's one, <laughs> one of the things I never uh, thought about. And, and I thought, you know, I should just take a look. And sure enough, um, I don't know why I didn't look at this before or even think to check on it, but you can tell here that um, that rear header tube on the passenger side is obviously shorter. Now that, that may make it easier um, in some regard. Um, that's my opinion. The passenger side, I don't think it's gonna be much issue with clearance, but we're gonna get into the car here in just a minute, double check on the things, but I thought that would be interesting to check out and um, interesting stuff here on the header build. Okay, so let's crawl under here and see what we got. Oh, you guys that have a lift have a leg up on us, that's for sure. You may recall my um, muffler hanger that I did last year. Got all that set up. I've had this system in here for, man, I want to say since 93, 92, I think since 92. At any rate, let's get up here and see. Um, one of the things that happens on a downpipe um, with 55, 56 Fords that you come through the frame here, and you can see up in here what kind of clearance we've got. Um, I'm up here on the passenger side, and that looks pretty nice. The only thing I've got right there, I've got my tube for my drain, uh, for the evaporator, for the AC sitting there. You can just barely see that. And then um, this pipe here, kind of extremely close. But um, we'll see how that looks. I'm thinking that if uh, that other side, see if there's room right there, that you can leave stuff out. Um, we'll just have to see how far, if it doesn't come that, that far down and it's close to the bell housing, we should be okay on this side. All right, here we are on the driver's side. Same idea, but um, it's tight. You got that, uh, the clutch return spring right there. Man, it's really tight in here. I got an oil um, line right there for my gauge. I got the cable. Of course, those, those things have been moving around. The spring I'm not so sure of. Um, it hooks to a bracket right here. I'm going to have to take a look at that. There may be something I could do um, further, but boy, I don't know. That's going to be tight one there. But at any rate, um, you can see where the clutch pivot is at. That bar there, um, right behind the spring, or I guess I should say above the spring from this angle. Um, that's tight as well. So, there's a lot to clearance here. Um, this could be extremely tricky, but um, let's go ahead and make some plans here to pull the exhaust manifolds off. And then of course also to get the uh, downpipe off so that um, we can check on our clearances here and see what we've got. All right, what might be dicey after coming from the underside is the three bolt flange here towards um, where this two and a half inch collector's at. That could be tricky to clearance on that uh, driver's side. I think if I can tuck in, I'm, I'm good, but still, 
I've got, got a lot of things that are down there. Um, wow. I don't know. Maybe I'm, if I don't have enough clearance, maybe there's something I can do that I don't have to have the flange. I'll weld around the circumference there where they meet and then extend the pipe down and just know that, um, you know, I may need to put a uh, the flange further down. I don't know. I'd take a look at that. That could be interesting. But um, I think for the most part, though, otherwise, I think things are fine. Um, I'd take a look at and see. Okay, uh, just a quick note here. Um, I pulled the uh, driver's side manifold, and um, I thought I had a little bit of an exhaust peck I could hear but never could locate it. And sure enough, um, this rear port wasn't sealing very well. This last bolt was a little bit loose. If you know anything about this, this is extremely tight. Put the manifold over the way Ford did this. Um, you're not gonna be able to come in and get a socket on that. It's almost next to impossible. You're almost against the firewall the way these are made. And that's why that's slotted. Uh, the idea is that uh, the bolts in there uh, loose and um, I take a box in wrench and do it that way oh boy all right fellas time for a coffee break uh, ran into a little bit of an impasse here trying to figure this one out but um, at any rate the uh, manual doesn't say anything about um, the down pipe uh, coming up through the engine compartment or coming out through the frame uh, underneath the car when you remove it. So um, everything's tight. And I remember when I put this thing back together, I had left the exhaust in position where it was at and did a lot of the work and everything and then dropped the engine in, added overdrive, uh, that three-speed transmission, of course, and then um, the clutch pivot. Uh, the overdrive cable, all those things. Um, I put it in there, and of course, as you work in, you go through, you don't think about pulling stuff back out. So uh, I had to give this some thought, but um, let's take a look at the manual real quick and see what it says. Just to show you <clears throat> some of the confusion I've got, um, basically following along here, 272 wild block passenger car, uh, vehicles equipped, standard driver, remove the clutch tragic spring, then it just goes, remove the nuts. All right, we've done that. Remove the number two spark plug. All right, obviously that's on the passenger side. Then it says what to do on Thunderbirds. Then it just says remove the muffler inlet pipe through the bottom of the vehicle. Does that mean either side comes out through the bottom? Um, I'm going to guess that's the case. So we're going to see uh, what we can do with this thing and try to figure it out. I did want to show you this. Um, I bought this exhaust originally in 92, 93, but uh, it was a long time and several years. I've had the car back together, running it and stuff. It has held up well. I bought it from Waldron's. I think it was a luminized exhaust. Back then, it cost me a little bit of money uh, for what I had when I was a teenager, but I was pretty happy with it. And man, uh, it's nice and strong. So let's try to get this inlet pipe out through yeah. the bottom. We're going to try to get this thing into position here. Got a light down on the bottom. And um, I went ahead and left the booster and the mass cylinder in place just because I know everything's tight, just to see what can I do with everything still in position. Uh, there's a spark plug boot on, let's see, what is that? Number eight back there and what I have to remove. Uh, I'm kind of hitting that to go down and then um, kind of go from there. But boy... Um, I'll move the camera around. You can see back in here, it is just extremely, extremely tight. So, and this is a two and a half inch collector down there. Probably, obviously a little wider than that. That's a good shot right there. Uh, you can tell a couple things. So, uh, let's take a look. All right, got the camera down in there a little ways. Um, you can see the bung there in the back kind of almost hitting, but of course it's it's kind of cocked uh, up front. So I've got a spark plug boot in the way, 
but um, it's very tight. I had to kind of jockey around the, um, oh, that bolt there for the steering column, which uh, that's really the shifter. I mean, that, that thing, that bolt can be removed if I need to, but um, let's take a look at I it. to remove the uh, booster and put that master cylinder off to the side a little bit so that I can um, get enough clearance. I need to raise up the back end uh, to get the, the collector to drop down. So I've gotten this far without removing anything. So early on, that's a good sign. I know like, man, but um, usually, Usually we're always told, you know, if you're dealing with headers, they got to come up from the bottom, you know, that kind of thing. That's how they fit the best. But with a set of shorties, I'd imagine you need to come in from the top. But um, we'll see what happens here. I'm going to take off this uh, booster, get it out of the way. All right, the booster and the master cylinder are out. And uh, I need to paint that master cylinder anyway. Had some leaks in that thing early on. I never did attack it seven years ago or six and a half years ago or it was so all right um looking down in here I'll grab the light real quick um i haven't touched it since i moved the mass cylinder out but uh, you can tell how tight we are now i've left that bolt in there i should probably go ahead and take it out now that i'm this far down that that thing was in the way that bolt at the rear of the exhaust manifold so let me do that real quick and uh, after we do that, we'll take another look. All right, the bolt just uh, came right out of there. Uh, plenty of clearance. I'll tell you what, though, uh, I like the way this looks so far. So, But uh, I've got that overdrive cable on the way. Um, that's something to kind of deal with to figure out what to do with it because it has to jockey over so far. I don't know how that's going to stick out or not. It may be fine. But um, I don't have it. Well, I'll tell you what, let's try to get the light set up a little bit. There we go. Let's try to put this down in there. Man, it's tight. Phew. I don't know. There's nothing against that cable, too. gonna go way down there all right let me uh look at some stuff on the bottom and see how we're doing down there okay uh, i took the header back out of there and then uh, of course the master cylinder booster are out and i just want to kind of take a look here at um what's down there so we can get a better idea of the room we're dealing with so just to um Look, look, top side. I've got this overdrive cable to deal with, and I'm not quite sure how Ford had this originally um, kind of going through with some clearances on the exhaust manifold. I am at the original location on the firewall. I do know that. So plenty of these cars had dual exhaust and the overdrive. So um, that could be a little tricky. Um, I do notice down here, if you can see, I've got my overdrive cable and my speedometer cable kind of crisscross there. That's probably something I can fix, okay? Because I'm gonna need that room, that space, right down in there to the left, probably the middle of your screen. I'm gonna need that space right there uh, to put that header through. Fellas, this is the moment you realized um, these headers are going to go on your run stand. And uh, what the issue is here is the steering gear box, but the steering gear box is not in the way of the collector. And the upper control arm as well. Um, the collector, I think, will go down through there and I've got enough room. The issue is how these tubes for six and seven go back to the collector. And there's no way, there's no possible way that those tubes are gonna clear 
the steering gear box and the the rear of the control arm back here um the shaft so that's a wrap um for part two on the sbc idea and man it's so tight in here um but i did find that i had a little exhaust leak um I get to paint my master cylinder anyway so i'm going to get back to that and um maybe i just need to save up my nickels and dimes for a set that somebody's already engineered okie dokie well fellas i'm a little bit bummed out uh these things are not going to work and a lot of it just has to do with the way that um the middle of the middle tubes um kind of kind of jut in you probably see that right there and what that creates on a 55 and 6 uh passenger car is just a lot of issues with trying to clear the control arm um shaft towards the rear and that upper control arm and then um also the steering gear box is just those things have got to like a heck take a serious hook around them or even over top of them so i think and analyzing some of the pictures of um what i see for maybe red's headers um rex hp or anybody else that's made a header um uh, that'll bolt right up to a stock 55 or 6 ford without any modifications well except for that um shift lever or the shift levers that are on your steering column uh, right there above the steering box um pretty much uh, those things are taking a high route uh, over top of that steering gear so uh looks like this right here is a no-go i probably won't get into the um header build for the <laughs> for the run stand but basically what i what i'm going to end up doing is um just explain it to you get a block of wood um that matches the height and then another block that matches the um, width. I won't make it exactly what's inside of there, but then put that up to the tube and then basically um, use the vice grips that I use for welding. Just kind of squeeze those in. And then um, after I get that done, um, I'll probably go ahead and bend the tubes where they'll match. Um, haven't decided yet if I'm gonna bend them first or go ahead and uh, make the modifications. I might, because these are so close, I might end up uh, bending the tubes first. And I've got, I've got map gas for that and um, torch head over there. So we'll get that done, put these on the run stand. All right, guys, car's still up on stands and uh, still up on ramps up front. And um, I've got two sets of headers now coming in, one from Rex HP. They're gonna be brand new, uh, coated, ready to go. And then I've also just, uh, plunked down a little bit of cash, not much, uh, for a set of used uh, Jerry Christensen headers, um, the four into one jobs, and uh, long tube, of course. So we're looking forward to getting those, checking them out for fitment, and then probably blasting them and sending them out to be coated. I'm not sure yet. So we're still waiting on that. That's uh, I'll give you an update when that gets a little bit closer. But uh, today we had um, some parts come in, and um, these heads. Uh, these G heads right here are going to go to the machinist tomorrow morning. First thing, I'll drop them off, and then we got the valves in there, seats, and um, also those springs. And um, along with that, got a nice little cam from Mummert, and you can see the specs on the cam. Uh, I'll post it here in the video for you and take a look at that, and we'll be degreeing that sucker in uh, when it comes time to put the block and the rotating assembly um, all together. So, um, Stay tuned, and uh, we'll keep working on this 312. A couple other goodies that came in. <clears throat> um, I really want to put these in. Uh, two and a half inch pipe. And of course, uh, we've got the exhaust cutouts here. So the idea is just to uh, uncap these at the track or any other time we want to make some noise. <laughs> and uh, it's like a lot of work here to get together, but... Um, these would work pretty well, I think, with the shorties and what I've got planned for them. I don't know uh, how they'll work with the long tubes and where exactly I'm going to put this. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I, some guys talk about going the electric cutout route. I don't know if I want to go that. 
far. Uh, it'll be something I only do a few times a year. And from what I understand, electric cutouts can leak pretty bad. So still tinkering in the shop.